Listen in because God is going to move right now in their lives. Get ready for get up and move on. Your life will never be the same. Get up, get up and move on. Yeah. And I'm talking to some people right now. You have to first convince yourself that God loves you. And then you have to convince yourself that God wants to help you out of your dilemma. Somebody write it down. I must convince myself. <laughs> you don't have to wait for somebody else to agree with it. Because you may not be around people who agree with it. You may not wait for somebody else to say your life could be better. Because you may not be around people who want your life to be better. If somebody would tell the truth. So we look at verse 10. So the Jews kept saying to the man, who have been healed? It is the Sabbath, and you have no right to pick up your bed. It is not lawful. My Lord, my Lord. He answered them, the man who healed me and gave me back my strength, he himself said to me, pick up your bed and walk. Can I get a witness? You got to know that there are some people that's going to question what happens to you and how God has transformed you. And they will even question your right to be a witness for him. They will question your right to preach for him, to teach for him, to obey what he has asked you to do. You got to know that. You got to know people will step in your lane and push you out of your lane and say you're not worthy and you're not supposed to be up doing nothing. It happens, but you got to know. You got to know ha, who transformed your life. You got to know that you had an encounter with Jesus. You got to know that you don't have a dog in the fight. You don't have to fight with nobody about your liberty. My God, you don't have to fight with nobody about your freedom. Oh, somebody help me. You don't have to fight about whether or not God is moving in your life. Just get up and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. He answered the man who healed me and gave me back my strength. He himself said to me, pick up your bed and walk. And I obeyed him. Come on, somebody. So let's keep it moving. We're in John, the fifth chapter, verses 2 through 17. Get up and move on. We're talking about the man that was healed at the pool of Bethesda. My God. Uh-huh. And we're going into the scriptures. We've already said he was surrounded by people that were invalid, people that were halt, people that was blind, people that were crippled, people that were paralyzed, couldn't hardly move. He was surrounded. There was multitudes of people all in the same place. But Jesus visited him one on one. And this day, Jesus is looking for a one on one encounter with you. Uh -huh. So catch up with us as we continue in this series. My Lord. He answered them, the man who healed me and gave me back my strength, he himself said to me, pick up your bed and walk. And they asked him, who is this man? Who told you to pick up your bed and walk? Who told you you could be free? Who told you you could be healed? Who told you you could be delivered? Who told you you could come out of that situation? Who gave you that right to come out? Of the situation without my permission, you got to understand the dilemmas you will encounter when you pick up your bed and walk. When you get up and move on, you're gonna run into people who say, Who told you? Ha, you could be free. Now, the invalid who had been healed did not know who he was, for Jesus had quietly gone away, had passed on unnoticed. Since there was a crowd in the place, Jesus went on unnoticed. After he had done a miracle, there were signs, wonders, and miracles. He went on and he passed on unnoticed since there was a crowd in the place. Uh, write it down, write it down. Sometimes you need to avoid the crowd. Keep a check. Keep a check in yourself and see if you can walk away from the crowd. See if you need the applause of the crowd or you could just slip through the crowd and keep it going. Because sometimes the crowd, my God, will be the very thing that trip you up. 
Oh, it's true anyway. Verse 14, and afterward, when Jesus found him in the temple, he said to him, who did he say? The renewed man, the man that had received the healing, the man that had received the deliverance, the man that say, I got myself together. Oh my God. And I'm going into the temple. I got myself together and I'm going to serve God for the rest of my life. He said this, I want you to pause and I want you to capture this. He said to him, see you are well. I'm celebrating that you are well. It's good to see you looking good. It's good to see you smelling good. It's good to see you prospering. It's good to see you in church. It's good to see you back on the gospel. I'll push that gospel fly and restore it back into your place in God. But I want you to look at this. And he said, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Stop sinning or something worse could happen. I want you to take a note of that. After God delivers and sets you free, my God, and put you in right standing again, don't go back to what calls you to get in that place. In this particular text of scripture, it was sin. And we have to examine ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to really speak to our hearts to show us is it sin? Don't be so quick to discount sin. Don't be so quick to say, I got this thing together. Don't be so quick to say the devil has a type. Although sometimes it is in a demonic attack, but sometimes it may be a sickness. It may be in your genetics, right? But it could very well be sin. Let a man or a woman examine themselves. Now there are some things that's written in the Bible as we go through the Bible is depicted as pure sin. No excuse. <laughs> now if it's there written <laughs> right there this is sinful before God then you don't have to guess why you're sick and broke down. Sin will break your body down. Sin will cause your pockets to be empty. Sin will cause your mind to go crazy. Somebody say avoid sin. Jesus said don't sin no more. Or a worse thing can happen to you. As I minister to people on the streets. And can sing some of the best church songs you ever know. I minister to people on the streets. My God. That can preach the walls down. But they play around a little bit too long. When you know truth. Walk in it. I've seen people just totally messed up and broke up. But they still know about the God. They just don't have the strength to walk in what they used to walk in. There is a place. And none of us really can call it in anybody's life. But we can say that there are some people off track and they haven't gotten back on track. But because you're listening to this message. Because you're willing to get up and move on. You can take by faith that God, you allowed me to hear this message because I can be renewed. I can be made whole. You love me. I just got to know I now have boundaries. Some places I can't go. Some people I can't be around. Some things I can't do unless I take a big risk of being worse off. Oh, somebody need to hold on to that. The man had gone at once to the temple. He was praising God. He was there to give God thanks and praises for his mercy. Jesus calls on to members and say, you've been made whole. And then he loves him enough to tell him, don't sin no more. You see, you can't listen to everything. You can't listen to every voice. One of the ways that a person can show you the most love is to forewarn you. When people forewarn you of danger, they are loving you. When people say this is sinful, don't do it. This is going to get you in trouble, don't do it. They are not being radically religious and all this other stuff that people are accused of. It's love. When people tell you you don't want to go out there and can't get back in, they are telling you the truth. Somebody say, I need someone. I want you to write it down. I need someone in my life, write that down, who loves me enough 
to tell me the truth. Now, this is the truth. I'm going to give you an illustration to let you see what's happening when people try to tell you the truth and you don't want to hear it. You got to know that there's a place of bondage and imprisonment. And there's a place of having one foot in the grave that makes Satan very happy that you have entered into that place. And when someone comes along that can pull you out of that one foot in the grave experience and begin to open up your eyes and teach you ways how to get free and delivered. There's a warfare that's going on. You have one foot in the grave. You're supposed to be dead. So if you're going to come up out of there, you better get ready for a fight. You better get ready for voices to tell you, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. Don't be around that person. Da, da, da. You better know that it's a fight going on. And once you get free, you better know that the fight doesn't end. The fight doesn't end just because you got free. Uh huh. You're going to have temptation that comes your way. You're going to have people that's going to tell you, it don't take all that praying. It don't take all that fasting. Loosen up and have a good time. Jesus said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to you. There is a place where it's worse. There is a place where the chastisement and the punishment for walking in sin is more severe because you know better.